And you can actually explore these same dimensions, the fourth and fifth dimension, just by growing your mind, just with reading, just with interacting with nature. It's dark as obsidian, and it's light and beautiful and bright as the sun, the salt of the earth, fire burning and water dripping. How could we be using goddess of magic? She is timeless. The pillar of the desert need a plug. She is the wildest woman. And let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is God. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and the Key, the original wireless woman. And welcome to my spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to the crew, but my returnee. You know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share this link. Welcome Wi-Fi to my augmented reality episode of The Wireless Woman. And you already know what time it is. It is time to call the roll. So I need all of my VR new media addicts to the front of the class. It is time to read aloud. All right. So in today's episode, we are going to be talking about augmented reality or as I love to call it, the matrix. But before we get into the content, do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because if you like it, well, I love it. Also make sure that you subscribe to the channel and there is information in the description box, the drop box below. Make sure you visit that. You will find the link to my backup channel should the man ever shut me down, damn the man, we will have a place to meet. My backup channel is kind of like that meetup spot in case of an evacuation or a fire drill. You should know where to go. Also in that description box is information on how you can support my channel financially, should you be so inclined to do so. And there may be links for information that I've talked about in the episode. So my description box is a great place to visit. Also, make sure you leave me some comments. I do respond to every comment and it gives me really great feedback on how to grow the channel and develop this community into a thriving, engaging group of people for us to interact with. All right. So in the thumbnail for this episode, I put the word surrogates. Now, if you are an old school Wi-Fi, the dial up like me, you will remember a 2009 video that had Bruce Willis in it that was called Surrogates. Now, in this movie, you had this utopian future society where people could have their surrogates they're like robotic machine counterpart, go out and live their lives for them while they stay in the safety of their home. Like they're able to control these little avatars. Take a seat in your stem chair and just with the power of your mind, 
you can control your surrogate and send it out into the real world. They go to the grocery store for you, interact with beautiful girls. Like if you're a particularly overweight or unattractive male or female, your surrogate can be someone who is much more attractive and appealing than you are. Does this sound familiar? So in this movie, someone ends up getting murdered. Bruce Willis's character is a police officer and he works through his avatar, but he has to abandon his robotic surrogate and actually go out into the real world and try to solve a crime. So one thing that I can always say is that anytime I see a certain piece of technology in a movie, they're probably already working on it somewhere. Robotic human surrogates combine the durability of the machine with the grace and beauty of the human body. I don't know if you remember the first Total Recall movie, but in that movie, they had these little hologram phones where you could talk to the person in real life, like a little hologram of the person would pop up and you could talk to them. And if that's not FaceTime on the iPhone, I don't know what is. So this movie combined the elements of artificial intelligence with virtual reality into something that we now know as augmented reality, where you're able to actually experience the simulation in real time. This is what this whole 5G upgrade was about being able to accomplish. So Alice, we find ourselves down in the rabbit hole, a virtual wormhole, if you will, of possibilities. Now, I, myself being the wireless woman, have come to warn you of the impending implications of this new augmented reality. Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. The best way to understand the metaverse is to experience it yourself. Experience it yourself. So basically the history of this thing works like this with gaming. Cause you know us, we started with duck hunt and Mario brothers, like zeros and ones, the, the matrix playing video games. That was 3d. You had to dial up, dial in on a hard line. So Things went from 3D into virtual reality, which is actually 4D. It's a lift of the 3D plane. It allows you to be able to interact with the interface, but not necessarily experience the illusion. You're just able to watch it in the fourth dimension. So 5D, the fifth dimension, augmented reality, is actually going to give you the opportunity to manipulate reality and to interact with that manipulation of reality. It's like an acid trip at this point. I'm not really sure how much further into fantasy and virtual reality we can go until we lose and blur the lines of actual reality. At this point, actual reality is so much less fun and even functional than virtual reality because it still exists back in that 3D plane. There is no fourth or fifth dimension to real reality. All of it exists within the third dimension. Now, the, the place where they found the fourth and fifth dimension was within the mind of people as the technology for being able to map the dark sides of the brain, because as I've said before, about 81 to 90% of your brain is dark. <laughs> it is dark gray matter. And scientists have been trying to figure out for the longest how to unlock these dark sides of the brain. And thus we bring you augmented reality. So augmented reality is scheduled to launch in 2025. It's called Clippers Court Vision. 
and it uses computer vision, AI, and augmented reality to analyze action on the court. And augmented reality will give participants the opportunity to participate in bending reality. Now, as I've also said in other videos, this is something that people who have access to spiritual planes are able to do. And we've read about it in a very practical way, despite the fact that people would love to believe that those things are fantastic. How does Jesus reach into a loaf of bread and feed 5,000 people with it unless there is some other dimension to it? And I know, <laughs> I know for a fact that another dimension exists because I have a fifth dimension in my pocketbook that I put things in it. And I have to reach into another dimension in order to retrieve it back. Like sometimes I go to look for it. It's not there. 50 minutes later, I reach back in. Boom, there it is. Augmented reality. There's also another dimension in my dryer. And in that dimension, every other sock lives. So I know <laughs> that there is a plane that exists that people can't see. They used to talk about it in the opening theme song to Tales from the Dark Side. And it would talk about this alternate reality and plane and a place that is just as real, but not as brightly lit in the Twilight Zone. But if you'll notice, other than Black Mirror, they don't really make sci-fi shows like that even the twilight zone reboot like fell flat because there is so much access to alternate dimensions and virtual and augmented reality now that people don't even feel the need to stretch their minds to think of the possibilities and we're being slowly dumbed down and given versions of reality to accept so that when the full matrix interface is completed and people can actually enter their consciousness into the matrix, they will willingly accept it. Not even because virtual reality is so much greater than the reality that we have now, but because it will be normalized at that point. Like most of us are already working from home. So to have an avatar that can return back to work for you, a robotic, artificially intelligent automaton that can actually go sit in the office, do your work for you. I mean, you're doing the work, but it carries out the instructions that you give it. It can talk with your homegirls and your friends. It can be better looking than you, like whatever you want your avatar to be. The movie avatar alluded to this same exact ability of people to be able to exist in a different form, but still have access to all of their cognition. Yes, I know everything that I'm saying is wild right now, but they're working on this technology. Like when it comes and you see it, you can understand that we're beginning to cross that line between where we are and going into a place that we can't come back from. And what's going to be more astonishing than the actual virtual reality is going to be the registration for this process. Because if you got to get vacuumated just to return back to work now, imagine what's going to be required of the augmented reality interface in order for you to register to participate. You know, they gonna want facial recognition, retina recognition, DNA, all kinds of things so that they will be able to encrypt your avatar so that your identity is not able to be stolen by anyone else. They're going to increasingly raise the level of compliance that you need to meet in order to participate in society. You know, so now you got your avatar out here walking around, interacting with people for you. It can pick up hot chicks because, you know, it's sexier than you are. You don't have to worry about that person to person in face rejection. I mean, that's basically what's going on on social media and date naps. Now you can project the life you want other people to believe that you have. So it's like I said, the blueprint for the matrix has already been laid. It's been intact. 
ever since they came up with Al Gore's internet back in the 90s. This has been the ultimate plan, is how they could turn people into battery packs and slaves. And most of us are slaves to entertainment and media. And this is going to be just another way to experience it in real life. What they're unveiling now is the augmented reality version in the NBA, which <laughs> of course they would use their slave plantation forms of media that they already have because why change it when it works? You can basically go on the court or the field and pick cotton with the slaves they already have. So the launch of the augmented reality is supposed to allow people to be able to be on the court in games, interacting with the NBA players as if they themselves also likewise play in the NBA. It's going to be so commonplace. It's going to be so normal to be inside of the matrix that a lot of people are going to want to build a home inside of it. They're going, they're already selling virtual real estate inside of some of these interfaces where you can go and live <laughs> virtually way more lavish inside of a simulation than you live in real life. Like this shit is real. Like it's it's getting epic. They creating destinations on the moon <laughs> for rich people. And then meanwhile, for the poor people that they intend to continue on the hamster wheel of labor and slavery all their lives until they die, they're creating augmented reality. Basically the walking dead, basically being sleep, but in a dream and this is how they want you to live. This is what they want you to spend your money on more and more and more and more entertainment. You can't buy property, land, anything that's actually going to give you legacy in the real world. They just want you buying luxury, entertainment, escape <laughs> through drugs. They are legalizing marijuana. <laughs> Like whatever it takes to keep you satiated and sedated. Unplug. You're lucky to be alive. Good thing you're unplugged. Unplug before it's too late. Please do not allow this system to get you addicted to its trappings so that when it comes time for you to. You know. Sorry, man. Okay. Get out! Turn it off. You will be able to let go. You will be able to let go of the simulated system. Most of us don't want to be outside growing food with bugs. We don't want to actually have a community with our neighbors where we know who, who are the producers in our community, who has what resources. Like in my house, I have a pantry. You know, if you're ever going through hard times, women who have children that need food, email me. At admin at the wirelesswoman.com. I have a dry pantry here, water bottles, toilet paper. I am more than willing to share. I am more than willing to help those that need help. And that's what we need to know is where are those places in our community? Where is the food supply? Where are the hospitals that we can go to if we don't have insurance? America is the richest country in the world and does not provide to its own tax paying citizens health care. Universal health care that they can't afford, despite the fact that they tax you for it. Because, you know, who does have universal health care? Your lawmakers. Your Congress. They don't pay a dime for it because they use your tax money to pay for them to have the benefits that they can't afford for you to have. But anyway, I digress. My point is we have to create a real world community, not Sims, not what's the little game, the farm. We have to create havens, you know, should a time of need or totalitarianism arise we should know where to go that's not a fema camp 
These are just my thoughts. The more and more and more and more and more that we explore alternate reality, I just fear that we won't be able to find our way back. Most of us have breadcrumb like memories of the time before the rise of the machines anyway. <laughs> Most of us can barely remember a time when you actually had to get on your bike and ride to your friend in order to talk to them or see them. Times when we used to have to unplug our phones during a storm. We're going to forget what the real world is if we stay entrenched in these social media platforms, gaming platforms. Like most of us are raising our children on this stuff. It's the babysitter. They spend more time. I, this is me talking about me. My youngest spends more time on games than he does in reality. And I have to begin to teach him how to work on cars, how to grow his own food, how to cook, how the real world operates. Otherwise, he's going to be plugged into a machine, ordering Uber Eats, you know, like not able to leave the house. That's what happened in the surrogates movie. Bruce Willis's character had become so atrophied in his muscles that when it came time for him to abandon his avatar and go out into the real world, I mean, this dude's eyes didn't work. His hair had turned blind. It was, it was a lot. It was a lot. He looked like Neo from the Matrix when they unplugged him like a newborn baby. Like, it's Wally. <laughs> the people had sat on the spaceship not doing anything for so long that they was completely useless when they came time to have to overthrow systems. When it came time to have to damn the man. The people didn't have the physical or mental strength because they were so reliant on the technology, on the system. This <laughs> is the crack of the 80s. You know, anytime I even try to have a conversation with particularly with black men about boycotting the NFL or the NBA, the thought of it I mean, the, the, the anger <laughs> at the prospect that wells up within them lets me know that I'm dealing with an addiction. I'm dealing with an addict. They know all their favorite players' stats, but can't remember their kids' birthdays. They got fantasy football teams and, and know all the rankings, but can barely remember their anniversary. And this augmented reality is going to be one of the worst things that can happen. You know, it's really going to create a system that's going to enslave the mind. We already have prisons that enslave and imprison and incarcerate the body. But once they get your mind inside of that box, that box that Lupe Fiasco talked about decades ago now, Everything he sees, he absorbs and adopts it. He mimics and he mocks it. Really hates the box, but he can't remember how to stop it. There's no getting out of that. <laughs> There's no getting out of this box. And you can actually explore these same dimensions, the fourth and fifth dimension, just by growing your mind, just with reading, just with interacting with nature and becoming more in balance with the spirit realm, chemically making changes to your diet that will allow you to open your third eye, allow you to open your chakras that will give you divine ability. And, you know, we have prehistoric people creating civilizations, pyramids. Everything that we see on the internet, everything that we see in movies, all of that came out of somebody's imagination. And then they use technology to flesh out what had been imagined. But we know that we already have manifestation energy and ability within us to actually create the life that we dream of and that we see. But if you do not search in, if you don't dive deep within, you're going to keep looking without for the things that you've already imagined in your mind. 
our reliance on technology is cutting off our ability to create the things that we need from within us. That's what everybody else has done. Bill Gates had the computer in his imagination. Steve Jobs, Walt Disney, all white people. But there were a lot of hands that brought their vision to fruition. And there's absolutely no reason why you can't do that too, except that you're distracted. You're distracted by the easy road and the easy way out of realizing your own hopes and dreams, which is just to accept someone else's. But like I said, when you do that, there is no ownership. And when there is no ownership, somebody somewhere owns it. You're going to have sold your cow for some magic beans. It is time to wake up from the American dream. It is time to unplug, be unbothered, and unleashed. Because as always, I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, your neighborhood wireless woman. Make sure you drop that fire headphones emoji for me in the comments. And subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Share, share, share. Until the next episode, class is now dismissed. See you in the comments. See